so I need to apologize to you. Hit the music. I don't normally do this. I don't often do this, so I really do hope you understand how real and genuine this is. Punch in. I, yesterday, was very mean and rude to, to anti-vaxxers, and I stand completely by that, but then shortly after I told all of you that I'm not your daddy, and I just, I saw the, the outrage, the backlash, the, 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 the genuine hurt that, that stemmed from the audience, and so I'd like to, I'd like to say I'm sorry. I said what I said, and I can't take that back, but I need you to know that it was, it was a momentary thing. I see you, I hear you, I, I will be better. Except I won't at all, because I'm really just doing this as a way to preserve my business and maintain my sponsorships. Also, because for some reason when I asked you not to call me daddy and then you did call me daddy, I started liking it. And now that's raised a lot of questions in me. Also, I'm sorry if this is the first video that you're showing to a friend or a family member when you're like, hey, I get the news from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, your daily dose of internet news poison. My name's Philip DeFranco. Hit that like button, otherwise I'm gonna punch you in the throat and let's just jump into it. First up today, we're gonna start, you know, with good news. News that makes you kind of go, maybe things are gonna be okay. And so I wanna highlight a beacon of his community, a, a leader, Edward Cagney Matthews. But actually, Mr. Action, what do you think of happy news? This is the Philip DeFranco Show. By bright beacon, I mean maybe burning cross and leader, uh, maybe of an organization that wears hoods. And the reason, for legal reasons, I'll say I'm jokingly saying that, is because this Mount Laurel, New Jersey man went viral after a video caught him harassing and launching racist remarks at a neighbor last Friday. This isn't their property, you dumb f You dumb f This is their own. No, this is common there, there, you not. dumb, ignorant there. This is called common property. I don't care. Walk okay, well, if you don't care, walk away. learn your laws. Walk it's away. not Africa. And you want to know where I was when all this happened? I don't care. At work, monkey. I don't care where you were. At work. Just okay. like I told the Mount Laurel police, get these f***ing monkey out of here and you can't do sh**. With Edward then deciding to save the internet a lot of time and he just doxed himself to the camera. That's where I live. Come see me. So you were real comfortable. So get me on video so you know what you see bring whoever. And as it turns out, if you say some horrendous stuff and then say, yeah, roll through, and you drop your address, dozens of people actually will. And by Monday, dozens of protesters were chanting outside of his door. And that's because in addition to the video, people in the community claim that he has harassed and launched racist attacks on several non-white residents for years. This even including a woman who said that Matthews kicked down her door and vandalized her vehicle, among other things. And so by the evening, there, there was over about 100 people at one point. Matthews briefly emerged to try and apologize. Police even eventually escorted him away with his hands behind his back as demonstrators cheered and launched objects at them. Also, as far as if anything's gonna happen legally, Matthews reportedly was already charged with harassment and bias intimidation on Friday, but also reportedly after reviewing additional footage of him, the authorities have added new charges, including assault. And finally, as far as Matthews, right for his part, he has apologized in a statement to reporters saying that he was drunk and that his tirade stemmed from a long running dispute involving the homeowners association. With him also, just, just brace, just brace for it, saying that the slurs were not meant to be racist and that he used the same language against white people. <laughs> oh God, he, of course Edward would think that that makes everything okay. I'm just saying brother, if I call that guy the N word and this guy the N word and they're different colors, how my racist checkmate. Also, in a separate interview, he said, I've never been a racist. I've made mistakes, said racial slurs out of anger or being drunk. And Edward, I'm, I'm just gonna stop you right there. Whether it be a racism or just really anything else, you being angry or, or being drunk, that doesn't negate what you did. Some may argue that you being drunk, all that does is take the mask off that you wear every day. If you even wear a mask at this point, you seem pretty comfortable. Like you said that stuff with your chest. And of course, with this story, like anything else I talk about today, I, I would love to know your thoughts though. With this story specifically, I feel like most all of you are gonna land on one side of screw that guy. So what I wanna do is follow that story up with a, a story I really would love to know your thoughts on. And, and that is this coconut kitty situation, though uh, it involves more people. So this increasingly has been a topic of conversation over on TikTok. And now we're seeing reports coming out. And most recently today, we had Vox reporting that TikTok's catfish problem is worse than you think. And there, noting that influencer Diana Dietz, who also goes by Coconut Kitty, has come under fire for posting suggestive and even nude photos of herself while editing her face to look like a teenager. With many of the people that are angry here believing not only is she making herself younger, but she's making herself appear underage. And most notably, kind of leading the charge of this conversation, you had TikToker Becca Day explaining in a now viral post that I can't play here because of copyright reasons, that she's taken it past the point of smoothing over her skin texture to take a few years off to completely changing her facial structure to look like 
like a young teenager, saying that it reminds her of the baby filter on Snapchat. Becca also going on to talk about this being kind of this a continuing trend, also criticizing Belle Delphine for making similar edits. With Becca asking the question, who do you think they're editing it for? They're going on to say plainly that it is P-word baiting and it is not acceptable. With the article also noting at a certain point, the line between typical influencer facetune magic and actively impersonating a minor appears to be crossed, which for many is even more concerning given that Deeds has 3 million Instagram followers. And while Coconut Kitty is the focus of the article, it also mentions that people do things like Asian fishing, where you have people perpetuating East Asian stereotypes, particularly those that accentuate youth or submissiveness. And so, you know, with this situation, there are two key debates that are happening. One, do you see this situation as a woman that's just using something that makes her appear younger and smoother? Or do you see it as something more nefarious that she's actively trying to make herself look underage? Right, not only growing like an Instagram following, but also an OnlyFans following. Uh, according to the report, she had over 12,000 paying subscribers. Right, is that okay? What do you think should or should not happen? Right, so you have that. And then separately, you have some people saying that oh, what's happening here is close to fraud, right? Because it appears that she may actually be drastically changing her face. Some would argue to a point where she looks like a completely different person and she's charging for a product, which is essentially access and photos and videos of her. But on the other hand, regarding that specific situation, it's not because at the end of the day, it's just as real as anything else that's just on the internet, right? You, if you're paying like for an OnlyFans or something like that, you're paying for the final product, which are her images and or videos. Whatever the raw product was, like before any of the filters or anything like that, that doesn't matter because that was never part of the equation because you're not meeting this person in real life or, or anything like that. Like if I was, but I'm definitely not, unless I am, but I'm probably not, uh, like a CGI rendering of a human being, at the end of the day, the, you're getting the same product. But if I then had like a live show and then you showed up and there was just someone that was dressed like me and cosplaying like me, that would be that would be fraud. But yeah, ultimately that is where we are with this story and the debates right now. And of course, I'd love to know your thoughts, especially regarding the first topic. Right? Do you see what, what's happening as wrong, that it's reprehensible, that it, it, it's what some people refer to as P-word baiting. Yes, no, why, why not? I'd love to hear from you in those comments down below. But from that, let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Peeps. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time that they're 35? And you know, maybe you have that friend or that family member that's dealing with hair loss right now, and if you don't want to, you don't have to just sit idly by to wait for that to happen to you, because now is the time to do something about it. Peeps helps you stop hair loss before it's too late with their scientific and affordable approach treatments that are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. And Peeps actually offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products that are out there. So some of you may have already tried them before, but probably never at this price. And you can get these products delivered directly to you, meaning you don't have to go to the doctor's office for your prescription, saving you both valuable time and money. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Franco, or just click that link in the description down below to receive 50% off your first order. Then in news that maybe you try to get in front of your boss, especially at a time where employers are having a hard time keeping employees and uh, a record number of people are thinking about leaving their job. Between 2015 and 2021, Iceland ran trials of a four-day work week, and now researchers with the Association for Sustainable Democracy and Autonomy have found that they were a major success. So the details, they had 2,500 workers, 1.3% of the country's working population, and they were paid the exact same amount of money to work between 35 and 36 hours instead of 40. And in the end there, researchers found that the productivity remained the same or even improved in the vast majority of Icelandic workplaces. And it doesn't appear that this is a random outlier. Those findings are backed up by other four-day work week trials, such as the one in Microsoft Japan offices in 2019. There, they actually found that the same pay but fewer hours resulted in productivity sharply raising 40%. And actually, Iceland's trials led unions to renegotiate with employers. And now 86% of Iceland's working population are working fewer hours or having the right to do so if they want. And so, you know, if you really think about it, the main point of this story is I'm not lazy for not doing Friday shows, I'm progressive. Then in easily some of the scummiest news I've seen today, let's look to India. And that is because at least 2,500 Indians near the financial hub of Mumbai and the Eastern Bengal province have fallen victim to a wide ranging scam that saw them pay for coronavirus vaccines only to then be injected with salt water. According to the Mumbai Police Department, there were at least 12 fake vaccination sites. The organizers made upwards of $28,000. And to make this even more disgusting, this wasn't just run by anyone and reportedly doctors and hospitals were also included. With an official at the department saying, we have arrested doctors, they are using a hospital which was producing the fake certificates, vials, syringes. Or with it looking like the scammers involved this private Mumbai hospital and so they were able to procure legit empty vials of the coronavirus vaccine. Hopefully with this situation, we do see some accountability right now. Uh, 14 people have been arrested so far. Uh, there are a number of charges, but uh, ultimately we're gonna have to wait 
and see. But also, maybe once we do that, we throw them into the fire? I'm joking, my lawyer said. I mean, these are just, they're, they're special kind of scumbags, but I'll move on. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about today is I want to wish you a happy six month anniversary. It's been six months since we all online or on TV watched uh, the storming of the US Capitol, a violent insurrection, or as some key Republican lawmakers have kind of equated it to, an unorthodox, unsanctioned uh, Capitol Hill walkthrough, like a tour group, unless we do acknowledge the violence, in which case it was definitely Antifa and the FBI, which would make you think that we would want to get to the bottom of it, but also, uh, we don't need to investigate it. And, you know, on this six month anniversary, I want to do two things here. One, I cannot recommend this enough. Uh, the New York Times put out a 40 minute documentary on the insurrection. It is incredibly well done. It, they synchronized and mapped thousands of videos of the Capitol riot. It 100% should be required viewing as people continue to downplay what happened that day or create cr crazy conspiracy theories that, that take away from what actually transpired. And two, because time, yes, it does soften everything, right? When you experience that moment, you experienced it as intensely as you ever would. But over time, it, you know, it feels maybe less impactful. It feels less scary. But remember, democracy, yes, was on the ballot in 2020, but that isn't where the fight and the fight continued on January 6th, where you had people like Officer Goodman putting his life on the line to herd insurrectionists away from sitting lawmakers. And the fight continues again as we go into the 2022 elections, especially as just a shocking number of state legislatures have expressed support for the big line. While at the same time, a number of key Republicans are restricting voting rights. Also, gerrymandering was already an issue, but the redistricting looks even worse this year. Yeah, I say this because I don't want you to forget that the fight is not over. And uh, yes, enjoy calm times now. But just remember, just because we're not in it right now and we're getting to enjoy our summers, whether it be a hot girl summer, a fat daddy summer, or whatever summer, there is a fight around the corner. But ultimately, that brings us to the end of today's show. And of course, our final note, thank you as always to you beautiful bastards, a part of the DeFranco Nation. Thanks for watching the video, liking it, subscribe, and joining the family. If you're looking for more interesting, weird, and important news, you can click or tap right there. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.